Welcome back to another edition of the Falcons Audible presented by AT&T with my guys, Dave Archer and DJ Shockley. I'm Derek Rackley. We are here each and every week. We are here on a Thanksgiving week for you. Hopefully you guys are doing all of your festivities, hopefully working out, burning some calories before the big meal happens <laughs> on Thursday. You know, you got to prep Does yourself. That work? That's right? what I'm work? doing. I'm doing I'm doing that right now. I'm like it's, dieting well, so I, on Thursday I can just go It's crazy. all between the ears. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, I feel like if you put in the work, then you can actually said, that enjoy work? on Thursday. You've never tried that? <laughs> never. My, mine's between the rib cages. <laughs> he said it's not between the ears, it's between the rib cages. There will be plenty between the yeah. rib cages uh, come Thursday. All right, here's the quick rundown of what we're going to talk about this week. Where I'm going to ask the guys what to watch out for in the Falcons matchup this week against Jacksonville. They're going to say a player that they think is primed for a breakout performance in the next game. We're going to talk about the defense having being a strength for the Falcons in their last game, even though they ended up losing there were some things some positives that came out of it from a defensive standpoint we'll talk a little bit about that we'll get into a bigger picture about the division and what has been happening around the nfc south we'll look ahead to the jaguars and then maybe the best part i'm gonna ask the guys one of their favorite thanksgiving traditions or dishes that they cannot yeah. live without mm -hmm. mouse water right now mouse water i know that. so you can think about yeah, yours yeah. and so when we get to that segment you can say if these guys don't say x y or z <laughs> they ain't real all right <laughs> all right so that's gonna do it guys let's let's get into it here um what to watch out for here's how i'm gonna set it up who is a Falcons player that is primed for an explosive performance this coming week against Jacksonville? It could be offense, it could be defense, but somebody that you guys think needs to step up or you've seen enough, Dave, to where I think this guy's going to take the next step in his wow. development. I'm the guinea pig here. Let's right. go, Ars. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna go with the run game because Lord knows we need to be able to run the football, <laughs> right? We have not run the ball at all this year. Uh, I'm going to go Mike Davis. Mike okay. Davis is a guy – that I think has the ability, for whatever reason, his numbers have been cut down because of maybe some ineffectiveness. We did see Quadri Olison step in and play pretty well. I'm going to say Mike Davis on a Thanksgiving Mike Davis is going to get it done. He's, maybe he's one of those guys that accepts the challenge and says, you know what, I need to do more. I need to find a way to make more plays for my offense. DJ, you got another guy. Is it offense? Is it defense? What do you think? Yeah, Rack, I'm going to stay on that side of the ball. I'm going to say a guy in Russell Gage. Okay. Uh, you think about what he did last year, you know what's in him. You know he has the capabilities to be a guy that can step up and catch a bunch of balls for you. Last three games, he's got 19 targets in the last three games. That tells you – there's an emphasis on trying to get him the football. Now, he's got 12 receptions for, you know, only 113 yards, but he is a guy that can get seven, eight, nine catches in a ball game and be a difference maker, as we both talked about. Want to get the run game going? Absolutely. We got Kyle Pitts. We got a couple guys hurt. We don't know if Cordell will be back. We hope he does. But if he doesn't, we need another guy to step in that mode and say, all right, I'm going to take a little pressure off my quarterback and I'm going to get open for him because we know he's played inside, he's played outside. Russell Gage, come on, baby, be that dude. I hear you. And, and guys, I'm going to kind of stay on the same wavelength here. Dave, you talked about run game, DJ passing game. I'm going to go in the passing game as well, and I'm going to say Alameda to Zacchaeus. He made a really nice catch in the game last week. I think it was towards the end of the second quarter. Uh, ball had to get out of Matt's hands quickly. He was running a crossing route. Great adjustment, finds the football, catches it, gets upfield. I think he got a little short of the first down there, but he's another guy where – Maybe he's somebody that says, okay, I got to get off the line of scrimmage quickly. Yeah. Ball's probably going to be coming out. I got to find a way to show my jersey to Matt. Yeah. I got to find a way to get open, whether it's on a shallow crossing route, a quick speed out, whatever it ends up being. He's another one of those guys. Look, when you don't have Calvin Ridley, one of the most explosive wide receivers in the game, it's the old adage. Somebody's got to step up. Yeah. You say Gage, I say Zacchaeus. Maybe it's both of those guys. Combined, Mike yeah. Davis steps in, helps out with a little bit of run game. Keep the defense as honest with some play action, Dave, mm -hmm. and maybe we can start moving the ball down the field a little bit. So we're staying offense here. If you got one, make sure you send it in to us. Let us know what you're thinking. A guy that's going to have an explosive performance this weekend against Jacksonville. Well, we didn't talk about defense, but there were some positives. Mm -hmm. Even though you end up in a game that's truly lopsided like it was against the Patriots, there were some things that were better, Okay. The Dallas game was one of those that you want to just forget as a defense. So how was the defense get improved from one week to the next? And Dave, I'll come back to you. What things did you see on the defensive side of the ball that gave you reason to be encouraged? Can't sit there and say that the Falcons have arrived, right? It's no. been a struggle of a season. But what did you see defensively that you felt like they made progress? Maybe they're starting to get it a little bit. Yeah, I think money down is where you go. You go third down. There was uh, New England was twelve, uh, 4 of 12 on third down. 
Uh, you also won in the red zone. You forced field goals. And that's ultimately in the National Football League, defensively, you're not going to shut people down. But can you win the money down situations? And that's the conversion down, third down. And when they get in the red zone, can you limit their scoring mm -hmm. to three points? They did that. It was a it was a winning defensive performance. To me, that's encouraging. And they we've seen signs of it before where they've done something similar. And I'll go back to the Dallas game, guys. I, I think we get skewed a little bit because the Dallas game got so sideways. That was a one, that was one quarter of football. It was the second quarter where things got a little weird. Obviously, defense getting any stops. The offense didn't help them any. Didn't get any first down. So I would say the defense is coming, and I would point to those those situations, third down and in the red zone. DJ, a quote from Arthur Smith after the game. He says, I thought the defense fought and played pretty well against the Patriots, and we haven't put a game together recently with all three phases playing well. He basically said they gave us a chance and we didn't take advantage. So he saw it during the game. Yeah. He knew that the defense played better, but we did not get the performance from an offensive and special team standpoint to be able to help complement. What did you see defensively that gives promise? The thing that's encouraging for me is the Falcons' defense ability to become more multiple in the ball game. And we got three sacks in the ball game. We got an interception in the ball game. But – I remember hearing DP's talk maybe a week or two ago. He talked about, hey, we only got 30% of our defense in right now, but I'm going to start giving these guys more. And when you turn on the tape or you watch the ball game, you look at some of the things they're doing defensively as far as scheme-wise, where guys are blitzing from, where guys are lining up. There are times where you got all guys standing up at one point in time, or you got uh, maybe a safety coming down. You're thinking he's going to play in a, a, a flat zone. He ends up going back playing middle field or cover two. I mean, there are a lot of different things that are going on pre-snap as, as opposed to post-snap that gives you – a little confidence to say, okay, maybe this defense is starting to understand where they fit. They are starting to understand where each guy is supposed to be. And I heard Eric Harris talk about it uh, way back in training camp where he said each guy on this defense has to know what the other guy is doing. And then there's times where if I'm playing safety, sometimes I may be lined up as a corner. I may be a nickel uh, on, on the inside, and I got to know what the guy on the outside of me is doing. So I, I love the fact that these guys are starting to understand what DMPs is trying to do. And they're coming up with creative ways. And we talked about it on the offensive side of how do we get creative to, you know, get some production. I think Dean is just trying. He's found a couple ways where he could be creative on the defensive side of the ball. We talked before we came on the air about maybe some creativity needs to happen. You mentioned it a little bit on the defensive side of the ball. I feel like these are seasons where coaches truly get challenged. Yeah. This is where they have to learn how to adapt because Arthur Smith coming from Tennessee and he might be saying, you know what, when I was there or what I rely on is X, Y, and Z. Well, that's just not working this year. Mm -hmm. So you got to find U and W, right? Just for <laughs> lack of a better term, but you got to yeah. find a different answer to it. You guys talked a little bit about uh, what, what you felt was the strength. We've talked this season about pass rush has not been consistent enough. Yeah. And there's been some time, especially the Dallas game, where the pass defense has not been great. But I'm going to give some credit to Foyer and Dion at the linebacker position because I feel like – if there's one spot right now you could say that the Falcons are in pretty good shape, it's probably the linebackers. I think those two guys are playing at a really high level. They don't miss a ton of tackles. They can both run sideline to sideline. And Foyer knows what everybody's doing and where everybody's supposed to be. And that's the kind of quarterback that you need on that side of the ball. Doesn't look like he panics, gets everybody lined up. And once that unit, all three levels of that defense continues to play together, they're going to make some strides. Am I going to sit here and say that they're shut down? No, we're not going to go that far right. yet. But every week something has to get a little bit better. So those are some of the things that we felt like were the positives that came out of the defensive performance. And right, right. I'll yeah. add one last thing to that is usually when we watch the defense or we watch things go on and we say, all right, there's a – two, three, four plays in the ball game where you're like, oh, man, that guy's running wide open. There's nobody around him. Well, I don't know if you guys can remember, maybe it was just one play on the touchdown where you had one guy running wide open and, you know, maybe it wasn't man, maybe it wasn't zone, but this defense doesn't have that where you got guys running scot-free in this secondary or scot-free through to, to make some plays. So I, I love the fact that you're limiting those, you're cutting back on those at least. So that doesn't happen, you know, four or five times a game. This, I, I want to go a little off script here, guys, because we talked about the defense, but I think 
I think we're kind of ignoring the elephant in the room if we don't discuss a little bit more offensively. So what I'm going to do here, Dave, is I'm going to tell you, you get your chance to be a little bit of a Monday morning quarterback here, right? And everybody wants to be a Monday morning quarterback. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants and thinks that they have the answer. But until your name is Arthur Smith or Terry Fontenot, you actually have to do it. You don't understand how challenging it is. But some of the creativity that comes to your mind, what would be some of the things offensively that you would start experimenting with, whether it's in practice, whether it's in the games that you feel like might be that change of pace that would help Atlanta move the ball down the field, whether it get, whether it happens or not, we have no idea, but you've been around this game your entire life. What are some of the things that you think they could make as a change up? Well, I got to try to supplement our run game. Somehow I've got to spread the defense and I've got to get people out of the box to create that opportunity. That means I've got to create some run opportunities along the line of scrimmage. I would I would like to see a little bit more screen game. I'd like to see a yeah. little more bubble screen game. We've got a wide receiver core that it kind of fits them. Alameda Zacchaeus, good in short spaces, small guy. Certainly Russell Gage has the ability to do those kind of things. I think even Kyle Pitts, you could set something yeah. up for Kyle Pitts. He's got good, good quick area, uh, short area quickness. You could do it for the backs. Uh, Wayne Gallman, uh, certainly Mike Davis is outstanding. He had 51 receptions a year ago as a Carolina Panther. I think you could do some of those things, but still have being a run set to a certain extent just to spread people out a little bit. I think that's one thing. And I'd also like to see – uh, more of a tempo scenario. Yeah, I yeah. think that I think that uh, we get a little bit bogged down because we've got a lot of personnel groups, a lot of tight ends coming in and out of the game and stuff. I think you lock in a certain personnel group, and that's why the Cordero Patterson injury becomes so significant. Is because you and and Hayden Hurst, yeah. he didn't play in this game yeah. either. That twenty-two personnel that you can play with in any capacity, right? Five wides, two backs, two tight ends, whatever you want to do. That kind of went away in this game, and I think that hurt Arthur Smith from a play call standpoint to be able to use that versatile group to just keep them on the field. And I can go tempo. I can be tight. I can be wide. I can do a lot of things. Yeah, your DJ still probably hamstrung a little bit by the pressure coming up front, but there are ways to kind of get around it. Some things that come to mind. Um, I think about a play call. We Oddly enough, just played New England when Tom Brady was there. Remember when they used to either take a receiver or a tight end and they would split them out. They would run it on the goal line a lot. Remember, they'd run the short motion. Brady would catch it and just throw it right out. And you basically tuck right in behind Mm -hmm. the wide receiver that's blocking in front. What does that end up doing? It helps the quarterback get the ball out of his hands quickly. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's speed sweep. Maybe it's run a wide receiver across the formation in motion and throw it to him right when he gets stacked behind the receiver or tight end end that's on the line of scrimmage right so these are some of the little ideas again maybe that doesn't sit matt behind the offensive line where he's got to wait two three four to sort out the defense other other ways dj you can think of that they can move the ball but get the ball out of matt's hands no i think you guys uh, are are spot on with some of the things you guys talking about i think the one of the biggest things that we have all emphasized is trying to find ways to run the football and the quick hitters, I think, are the way you can do it. The extensions of the run Correct. game, like you just mentioned, yes. the jet sweeps, the little bubble screens, uh, getting it out quick, you know, just getting something where it's first down and you throw it out there and you get three, four yards. That helps you. Those are the type of things that are, are good for a quarterback, but it also keeps those D linemen, their eyes are always on a swivel. Like, okay, the ball's out. I got to go uh, I gotta go east and west to try to go make a tackle. And you know, not, maybe not rush up field as much all the time. So I love the fact – that you guys mentioned some of those quick hitters because those are some of the things I think we have missed out on and we haven't really done as much because we're trying to be more vertical. We're trying to create the run game. But anything we can do to extend the run game with with backs, with tight ends, with receivers, I mean, they're all athletic enough to do the speed sweeps, to run the quick bubble out there when you get three, four yards, get a big physical tight end out there. We got four or five of them, get them out there blocking on the edge. So I think all those things are, are – are uh, advantages for us, uh, things that we definitely will look forward to. And maybe this is a time where we've done that. We've been on a, a mini buy. And usually on these mini buys, you go in and say, okay, what are things that we can do better? What are things that we've struggled with? And maybe these are things that they already have thought about and say, okay, we're going to implement going into next week. I, I, think- know, I know one thing that can happen, and I think that people don't realize this, is – confidence ebbs and flows on both sides of the football, but it ebbs and flows at every position. Offensive lines need to have confidence. You think, okay, well, they're big, big, rough guys, and so it really doesn't matter. Yeah, it does. If you have negative plays, you begin to play tight. Now, all of a sudden, your steps aren't quite where they're supposed to be. Your landmarks aren't where they're supposed to be. You start to kind of guess where you're because you, you don't want to get beat. And that, that 
permeates a run game. And I, I don't think we're playing with any confidence up front because yeah. the quarterback's on the ground behind me a number of times. It might not be my fault, but one of the other guys missed a guy, and then maybe it's my turn. Run game, negative plays on first down. So I think Arthur's really battling. Arthur Smith's really battling as oh, yeah. a play caller to try to build confidence in the unit to get first down. String first, you're three for 22 the last two games on third down. Get first downs. It might be as simple as stringing first downs together in a drive, and all of a sudden that confidence begins to flow back in. It can ebb and flow in a game, and certainly this is a young offensive line. Jake Matthews, the one veteran really on this team, everybody else is a bunch of young guys up there. Yep. And I think their confidence is not really good right, right, right yeah. now. Yeah, and I think Arthur Smith was asked after the game about the offensive line, and basically his, his comment was anything is on the table right now as far as options, and maybe not necessarily from a personnel standpoint changing up what he's been doing from a play calling perspective maybe that's going to be on the table as well as we move forward let's talk a little bit about the division let's step away from the Falcons per se uh, because if there's one good thing you could say about it is that the division is not creating a ton of separation with Atlanta because the division is losing a little bit too outside of Tampa so let's talk about the Saints first they end up losing 40 to 29 against the Eagles of course Falcons know about Philadelphia from earlier this season third loss in a row DJ for the New Orleans Saints yeah it's been one of those kind of seasons for them where uh, obviously when Jameis was in things are rolling a little bit better uh, they had consistent play I mean uh, the Seaman kid is trying to hold on. I mean, be honest. I mean, he's you know he's playing a decent ball for them, but at the end of the day, they're not getting it done. And they're right there sitting with five wins. We're sitting with four. I mean, it, it tells you this division is still there for the taking. Uh, Tampa just lost two in a row. I know they just won on Monday night, but they're not just world beaters. But in this division, you still get the Saints at home. You still get – uh, the Bucks at home, so you have opportunities there to close that gap and feel better about yourself. Dave, a uh, couple of weeks ago, Falcons played Carolina. Carolina loses to Washington and kind of a similar theme from when Atlanta played Carolina. Panthers allow 190 rushing yards in the game. That was the issue for Atlanta when they played against Carolina, so they almost got a taste of their own medicine against uh, Washington. What sticks out to you about that that game with Carolina? Well, one that Cam played pretty well. Cam Newton came in and, and I think he was twenty one to twenty seven through a couple of touchdowns or, or a touchdown and then also ran for a touchdown in the game for Carolina on offense. You think, wow, if we get a little bit of a bump offensively because of all the struggles Sam Darnold went through, we're playing well enough on defense, we can go win some games. And then all of a sudden your defense gets run over. I mean, <laughs> they gave up, what, uh, 36 six minutes of time of possession. Washington held the football, you know, two-thirds of the game and, and, and really controlled the football game. And then their inability to rush the passer. Taylor Heineke, a local product, went yep. off and threw three touchdowns yep. in the game. So this was a game when you look at the stats, other than the time of possession and the rush yards that, that uh, Washington had, you thought, how did Carolina lose this yeah, game? Because, yeah. it, because they really – and it was a close game that uh, Washington ended up winning at the, at the end of the game, but uh, pretty good homecoming for Ron Rivera. Yeah, and it's, it's one of those games where, for the Panthers, they're facing at the time a 3-6 and six Washington, and they end up losing the game. I mean, sometimes just some crazy things happen uh, in the National Football League. And, DJ, I'll finish this discussion with you. You did mention the, the uh, Buccaneers playing on Monday night against the Giants. We talked the last couple of weeks about are there issues with Tampa Bay and or is this just kind of a blip in the radar? It looks like they were able to get things turned around against the Giants. Anything stick out to you about the Buccaneers' performance? Well, I, I just think it's you know an embarrassment of riches what they got over there. I think Brady <laughs> hit like 10 different guys in the ball game. They got Gronk back. Uh, obviously, Antonio Brown's not playing, but – you think about Edwins, you think about Godwin. I mean, O.J. Howard was a big part of the ball game. I mean, they, the defense has always been something that's been a stalemate for them, uh, something that they can, you know, kind of be a linchpin for. But this is a an offense that I think Brady said it on Monday night that they kind of started to find their way in that ball game. And with the amount of guys he has around him, and if they take care of the football, they're going to be tough to beat. Yeah, yeah. to me, it's their defense. I, we know Brady's going to go get his. He had 30 completions in the game, and he's got that wealth of talent. But their defense had not played very well the last couple of weeks in their losses. Their defense holds uh, the Giants to just 66 yards rushing. Saquon Barkley back on the field, he was a non-factor. And they took the ball away three times. That's To me, that's where their bread's buttered. If you go back to the Super Bowl and look how they harassed Pat, uh, Patrick Holmes, uh, Mahomes, yep. 
that to me that's the key for them because because Brady's going to do what he does but can you limit the opportunities for the other team's offense they did in this game yeah so NFC South as it currently stands Tampa Bay seven and three New Orleans Saints five and five Carolina five and six Atlanta four and six so not necessarily going to get into a playoff discussion here but even though the Falcons have struggled the last couple of weeks there's not been a lot of separation created in the division with still a lot of football left to play This episode in part brought to you by The Home Depot. Everything you need for your next home improvement project is just a tap away on The Home Depot app. The Home Depot app digital toolbox gives you access to how-to guides, project calculators, and image search so you'll know exactly what you need to pick up. With the tap of the finger, you can rent and reserve the right tools for the job. Also, browse through millions of items from top brands that you can have delivered right to your door. Whatever your project, find exactly what you need with the Home Depot app. Download the Home Depot app today. Dave, I'm going to come right back to you as we look ahead to next week because that's what this organization is doing right now. They're looking ahead to next week facing Jacksonville. Uh, things probably have not gone the way the Jaguars anticipated after drafting Trevor Lawrence this year. Obviously had some issues with Urban Meyer, but what is it going to take for Atlanta to get back on track and put a win in the column this weekend against the Jaguars? I think it's simply about Atlanta going out and getting first downs. I think if you string first downs together, the old adage is if I can move the chains enough, the goal line's going to hit me in the face. Yeah. And, and You've got your three for 22 on third down the last two two games. You've got to go get third downs. You've got to convert on third down. They're not bad on the defensive side of the football. Not great, but they're not bad. Their offensive side of the football struggled, much like Atlanta's has. This is the number two thirty. This is the number 32 ranked team on third down conversion on offense. Well, Atlanta's 30th in the league running the football, 29th in the league on offense. So these are two offenses that are trying to find some foothold and this will be the game where one of them does and one of them doesn't. So I think it's more about trying to go out and just put first downs together. And if you do that, I think that you'll get some confidence, like I talked about on the offensive side of the football, and things will be in to get, begin to go your way. DJ, we talked about this previously. Atlanta 1-4 and four at home, 3-2 and two on the road. Um, and the, the Jaguars are coming off a couple of losses themselves, so they're probably sitting in a similar situation, maybe questioning themselves a little bit. What do we need to do to get back on track? But I ask you once again, because it always gets talked about, it's not about what the opponent does, it's what the Falcons do, and I think that's probably more or less the point for anything this year for Atlanta is they've got to worry about themselves. Yeah. But what do you think are some of the keys for them to get back on track against well, Jacksonville? I think what Arch mentioned on offense uh, is tremendous. And I think we talk about what we do on the defensive side of the ball. And with having the ability to maybe get more first downs, I think if we're able to take the football away from yeah. them, that gives the offense more opportunities. And Lawrence has got nine interceptions on the season. He's been sacked 19 times. So the guy's been under some duress. As you know, we've seen here, been under duress it does, not a, does not bode well for, for anybody. But if you're able to turn the football over it, then you start giving your offense more confidence because they're going to have more opportunities to do great things or do better things on that side of the ball. So I think we built we, – we started to build on the last week where we got three sacks. A.J. Terrell finally went up. He got one, took the ball away, and you can see it kind of give that whole entire sideline a lot of confidence when you have those type of plays. So if you can do this on the road, it gives you, I think, better – uh, it gives you a better chance to win this ball game. DJ, you mentioned the the issues with pass protection and the interceptions for Trevor Lawrence. So opportunities are going to be there for Atlanta. Can they make the plays? Can they get the uh, the opposing offense off the field and just try to find ways for Matt to get back on the field and, like you said, string together first downs and see if they can end up getting in scoring territory. All right, last but not least, it is Thanksgiving week. All right, DJ said that he has been Stout. working out. Dave, no, I didn't say he hasn't that. got to that point yet. Um, <laughs> all right, guys, I want you to give me your I got to work that in yesterday. Your dish or two on Thanksgiving that is non-negotiable. Okay, yeah. so like, let's just say your your wife is going to invite some family over. Maybe it's a family that you've never celebrated this hot this holiday with, and and they call up and they say, okay, we're going to bring X, Y, and Z, and DJ, you and Dave say, all right. But we are going to have this because these two things, one thing, whatever it is, is non-negotiable. And you can't just say turkey. Okay, yeah. that's the easy cop out. Yeah, yeah. What do you got for me? Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and jump off. I got to have dressing. Dressing is number one for me. I don't do the cranberry sauce. I don't do all that. I just need <laughs> some dressing with some good gravy on it, and I'm good. 
We already got the fried turkey. We got smoked turkey. We got a little bit of everything. We got we got a little bit of everything. But we got to have the dressing. I need the mac and cheese. Okay. And then to finish me off, go, okay. ahead, and, go ahead and knock me all the way out. I need some good old peach cobbler. My okay. Wife, my wife okay. Makes, I knew the sweets were coming. Peach nice. cobbler. I didn't just, know if he was going to add another side, <laughs> or, but I was thinking the dessert was coming. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right? No doubt. Because Thanksgiving is not Thanksgiving without the dessert no spread. Doubt, no doubt. No okay. Doubt. Dave, what do you got here? Yeah, I, I really, I'm riding with shock Let's here. Let's go. On this. Cornbread dressing Ooh. is okay. a meal by itself. Ooh. Okay. No you can do, you can even have the turkey if you want <laughs> Talk to. Talk to him, As long as I yeah. got cornbread dressing, I'm yeah. good. It's a meal in itself. I cannot eat the turkey without the cornbread dressing. Yeah, yeah. Sprinkle in some of the, you know, sweet potato casserole. Sweet, sprinkle in some, uh, some uh, what, green bean casserole yes. if you want to. Yes. But cornbread, it's my mother's cornbread dressing. My wife has learned how to make it. She makes it extremely extremely well gotta have the dress hey y'all can't see if y'all can't see arch he about to cry right now thinking about it right now he got a little <laughs> i know got one thing you're spit running out of my right. mouth right <laughs> i'm about to say he might be crying but i'm gonna have a hard time finishing over here because right, y'all what are you making got, me hungry we don't brought it what you got here, you know what's interesting is is i guess it's kind of traditional but like when we were growing up like we had mashed potatoes and gravy for thanksgiving yeah and i moved to the south and that's not a big deal. Nah, not a big deal. It's not a big no. deal at all. It's a big deal in my house. No, and no, like no. my, my, my wife's family, my they'll make mashed potatoes, but they wouldn't have gravy. That's just and I was like, that's, that's criminal. That's criminal. That's like peanut butter jelly sandwich yeah, that's criminal. without Agreed. the jelly. Need the gravy, need baby. Have gravy. So that no afterwards, gravy, they started like as a token, adding the gravy for as me. As a token. That ain't no token. Right? Come on, man. Get it's a staple. Man. Gravy is a exactly. staple. I thought gravy was like the turkey. No doubt. Um, I like come. your green bean casserole. I like it with the uh, the fried onions on top Absolutely. of it. Just got to give it a little bit of a crunch, yep. just a little bit of a consistency. Oh, fan. yeah. Not a fan. But I, actually, I, I set the rules here, but I'm going to break them slightly. Go ahead. Okay? My wife's family is not a turkey family. Ooh. So like, you don't, you, they don't have a turkey at all. So like the like the first couple of years, like I made a turkey, and they're like, "Oh, okay, good. Like I'll try a little bit of it." <laughs> and then like the next couple of years, it was what? like, "We we don't really like turkey." And I I just had one of these with my wife. Oh <laughs> no! <laughs> that blank stare. Oh no! Excuse me, what? What? The last they so they eat ham. Okay. When okay. have you ever seen like? If you type up Thanksgiving on your smartphone, ain't no ham a turkey up. comes up. Yeah, ain't no ham. It's not up. a pig. No. Okay? No it's ham. not a slice of ham. No. It's a turkey. Yeah, I never heard of, I never it's, heard of Thanksgiving ham. So it's a rite of passage. Okay. So they will have ham, but the Rackley side of the family will be making That's turkey. That's what I'm talking about, Rack. Okay? You make sure, okay? you make sure yeah. the turkey stays It's got to be there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> do you guys have Thanksgiving <laughs> without turkey? Ridiculous if you do. I hope Sorry. not. I hope not. <laughs> All right. Enjoy though if Sorry, you do. I, enjoy I, it. I was enjoy starting it. to get stressed out for a little bit. We're good. We're good. Enjoy without no turkey. We're good. We're good. Okay. We're good. I did get two workouts in this week. I'm going to do one more tomorrow, so I feel like I earned my meal. Wait a minute. This week. It's, yeah. Where are we at in the week? It's, we're kind of early in the week, aren't it's we? Tuesday. Yeah. Got to okay. get it started. I'll never miss Monday. So when, I understand that. I got my work in Monday, but that's one work after this week. Now we know this is going to okay, oh. this going to air like maybe when we when we go into air with our with our podcast it'll be later today Sam. okay so coming yep. out today yep so we only had one day in this week <laughs> no 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 so you oh, said I, I, Rex I got, said he already got his I, in I, I got a couple of workouts would you today. work out twice yesterday no, no, no. he said he already okay. got it in a day as we are finishing it's about 12 20 okay so Dave there's plenty of time left for you to get because listen get to me here okay your green bean casserole mm -hmm. that one workout is only taking care of that is that all you're going to eat this week? Well, the green bean casserole is the least of our worries. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going minimum. to the shock sales. I'm going to Pete's Cobbler. <laughs> okay. So uh, how many workouts have you gotten in this week to uh, help shed off some of that Thanksgiving? Yeah. Or maybe you're going to wait till afterwards, or maybe you're going to say, guess what? I ain't even doing it. Sorry. It's Thanksgiving. Hey, uh, that's going to wrap it up for us this week. Um, hopefully you enjoy all of your favorite dishes, whether it's some of the things that we talked about, or Get maybe you, you got turkey, something people. different. Make sure you have a turkey Get on Thanksgiving, turkey, everybody. People. Thanks Happy so much for joining us. We will be Happy back next week to recap the Falcons game with Jacksonville. On behalf of DJ Shockley, Dave Archer, I'm Derek Rackley. Thanks so much for watching the Falcons Audible presented by AT&T. Take care, everyone. Peach cobbler, right, Jeff? No doubt. All day, baby. <laughs>